In our Lenten season, we continue to be taught how to pray at the School of the Holy Spirit in the Sacred Liturgy. Pope St. John Paul II explains this further in his encyclical Catechesis Tredende, as he writes, Catechesis is intrinsically linked with the whole of liturgical and sacramental activity, for it is in the sacraments, especially in the Eucharist, that Christ Jesus works in fullness for the transformation of men. It is in the liturgy where God acts through the church, we react as children of God, and in that relationship we are transformed by God's grace into other Christs until we are called back to him. With this in mind, we can make sense of this week's collect or opening prayer of the Mass. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. God acts. He speaks. We react. We listen. By listening to and being nourished by his word, we are transformed. Our spiritual sight made pure. And this transformation of our sight is the ongoing conversion in our life, immersed in the sacramental life of the church, until we are called back to him, to behold his glory. God acts. He speaks. What is he saying? Very simply, I love you. Divine revelation, God's revelation of who he is to us, is summarized in St. John's letter that God is love. Therefore, every action of his is to communicate that love. We were created to be in that loving relationship with God. However, we know that God's love can be accepted, received, or rejected. And that is what our first parents, Adam and Eve, did. They reacted to God's love by disobeying God's word. And unfortunately, that has consequences ever since. Our spiritual sight has been blinded by sin. So it is within this context that we look at our first reading, where the God who has revealed himself as love communicates that love to his people by asking a father to kill his only son. Seems senseless. One could say even reckless. Yet Abraham obeys. He listens to God's word. His reaction is to trust, to have faith. And it is in that faith that restores his spiritual sight to rightly order his life, the loves of his life, first to God, then to his family and his only son. Abraham would die at a good age, buried by his son Isaac. We pray in the liturgy in the first Eucharistic prayer, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith. As we believe he is in heaven beholding the glory of God for all eternity. <clears throat> but even with Abraham kind of making that pivot away from the snowballing of sin, sin still continued to snowball down the hill. Thanks be to God that he sends a remedy for our spiritual blindness, for our sinfulness in the person of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. He acts, 
He so loved the world that he sends his only begotten Son, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. And he does this not by sparing his Son from death, but offers him as the sacrificial lamb, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He carried the wood, he carried the cross on his back up the hill of Calvary where he lays down his life for us. The transfiguration then was to remove the scandal of the cross from the hearts of his disciples. To show them that when we listen to God's word and obey that word, we will face tribulation, yes, But through that we are transformed, our spiritual sight made pure, so that we can see clearly what the goal of being a disciple of Jesus Christ is. Beholding the glory of God as his children for all eternity. St. Paul reflects on this mystery after encountering the risen Christ and enduring much adversity in his ministry by stating that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from the love of God. That we are redeemed by the Father's love for man, revealed in his only begotten Son. He is the provident Father who did not spare his Son and sent him into the world to die on the cross, for us and our salvation. Our Lord's death on the cross and burial is not the final word. The glory of the Lord, the resurrection, is the final word. And this is the word that we are to listen to. The voice echoing in our ears and in our hearts that God loves me. And if I respond to that love with faith and with trust, I will be transformed. My spiritual sight made pure to see beyond what is offered in this life and ready myself to behold the glory of the Lord for all eternity. We read in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, through the liturgy, the inner man is rooted and grounded in the great love with which the Father loved us, in his beloved Son. And so I encourage you to challenge yourself this Lent in opening your ears and heart to the voice of the Lord speaking his personal, I love you, through the sacraments and in your Lenten works of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. In so doing, we are being transformed. Our spiritual sight is made pure, leading us to greater joy now and the fullness of that joy in heaven with God for all eternity.